million dollar question. What if you knew exactly what happens when we die? Could it change how we live? These questions, though seemingly simple, plunge us into a complex web of speculation, belief, and mystery. The universal nature of death is one of the few certainties that binds us all, no matter our race, religion, or geographical location. Yet, despite its inevitability, the enigma surrounding death remains largely unsolved. In every corner of our world, death is a topic that stirs a myriad of emotions. Fear, curiosity, sorrow, acceptance. Such is the spectrum of feelings that this singular event can evoke. Yet isn't it fascinating how the one certainty of life, its end, is also its most profound mystery? Over the course of this video, we will get into the depths of this mystery, exploring the different perspectives on death and what may lie beyond. Each culture, each religion, each scientific theory, and each individual holds a unique viewpoint. Some see death as the end, a simple cessation of existence. Others view it as a gateway, a transition to a different form of being. And yet, some perceive it as a cyclical process, a wheel of birth, death, and rebirth. In this video, let's explore these cultural perspectives, diving into the rich tapestry of beliefs about the afterlife, reincarnation, heaven, and hell. Let's touch on the scientific theories and studies related to near-death experiences and the physiological changes that occur during the dying process. Philosophical reflections on death and the existential questions it raises will be discussed. We'll delve into the works of philosophers, those brave souls who have dared to ponder the meaning of life and death. We'll also examine the evolution of views on death throughout history and share personal stories from those who have had near-death experiences or profound thoughts on the subject. We'll address the psychological and practical aspects of death and explore how mortality is portrayed in literature, art, music, and cinema. And finally, let's tackle the ethical dilemmas related to end-of-life decisions. So, brace yourselves, and please like this video, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let's embark on this journey, confronting the ultimate unknown, death. How does a Tibetan monk view death compared to an American atheist? It's a question that opens the door to a fascinating exploration of cultural perspectives on mortality. As diverse as our world is, so too are the beliefs about what happens when life ends. In the highlands of Tibet, for instance, death is seen as a transition, a stepping stone to a new life, embodying the concept of reincarnation. On the other hand, an American atheist might see death as the final act, with no encore. In the heartlands of India, the soul is believed to embark on a journey towards a heavenly abode, or perhaps a cycle of rebirth, depending on one's karma. Contrastingly, in the secular societies of Scandinavia, death might be perceived as a natural, biological process, devoid of spiritual implications. So, death, it seems, holds a myriad of meanings across cultures. What does science have to say about death? Well, let's dive in. Science offers a biological perspective on death, primarily focusing on the cessation of vital bodily functions. However, it also delves into the fascinating realm of near-death experiences. These are intriguing phenomena often reported by individuals who have survived a close brush with death. They describe experiences of moving through a tunnel, encountering spiritual beings, or sometimes even a sense of peaceful detachment from the physical world. For science, this is seen as the brain's response to extreme stress. Studies suggest that in these moments the brain releases neurochemicals, creating a vivid, dreamlike state. The body, in its fight for survival, may be trying to mitigate the fear and pain associated with dying. Moreover, science also explores the physiological changes during death. As life ebbs away, the body undergoes a series of changes, starting from the shutting down of organs to the cooling of the body. From a scientific perspective, death remains a complex and fascinating process. What do philosophers make of this inevitable end we all face? Philosophy, the love of wisdom, has long grappled with the existential questions that death presents. From ancient thinkers to contemporary scholars, the exploration of mortality has been a common thread weaving through the tapestry of philosophical thought. Take Socrates, for instance. In the face of his own impending demise, he famously stated that, to fear death, gentlemen, is no other than to think oneself wise when one is not to think one knows what one does not know. In essence, Socrates was saying that fearing death is irrational, 
because it assumes a knowledge of what death is, when in reality, it remains a mystery to us all. Fast forward to the existentialists of the 20th century, and we encounter a different perspective. Philosophers like Heidegger and Sartre saw death not as a distant, abstract concept, but as a fundamental part of our existence. Heidegger argued that being aware of our own mortality could lead to a more authentic and meaningful life. For him, the shadow of death casts light on the importance of living. Meanwhile, Sartre claimed that death is absurd because it marks the end of our existence, and yet, paradoxically, is an inherent part of it. It is an inevitable event that we cannot experience or comprehend, thus creating a sense of existential angst. In more recent philosophical discussions, death is often seen as a catalyst for reflection on the value and purpose of life. Some philosophers argue that our mortality gives life its urgency and significance, while others suggest that it exposes the inherent futility of our endeavors. Still, others, like philosopher Thomas Nagel, argue that death is primarily a misfortune because it deprives us of life. It is the loss of all the goods that life contains, and thus, something to be rationally feared. Yet, despite the diversity of perspectives, one common thread runs through these philosophical reflections, the acceptance of death's inevitability. As we grapple with our own mortality, we are forced to confront the deepest questions about who we are, why we are here, and what it all means. In the lens of philosophy, death often brings more questions than answers. How have our ancestors coped with mortality? And what can personal experiences tell us? Let's delve into the annals of history. Ancient civilizations had their unique ways of grappling with the inevitable. The Egyptians, for instance, built grand pyramids, tombs of pharaohs that symbolized their journey to the afterlife. The Greeks, on the other hand, believed in an underworld ruled by Hades, where souls would find their final resting place. But history is not just about the views of entire civilizations. It's also about personal narratives that weave a rich tapestry of human experience. Consider the poignant words of a man who had a near-death experience. In that moment, I felt an overwhelming sense of peace. It was as if I was stepping into a realm beyond the physical, beyond the tangible. These historical views and personal stories bring us face to face with the multifaceted nature of death. History and personal narratives add layers of complexity to our understanding of death. How does art reflect our thoughts on death? Art, in its myriad forms, has long been a medium through which we navigate our feelings and beliefs about mortality. Literature, for instance, is teeming with contemplations of death from Shakespeare's tragic heroes meeting their untimely ends to modern novels exploring the complexities of grief and loss. In visual arts, death has been personified, feared, and even celebrated. Artists like Frida Kahlo and Damien Hirst have used their work to confront and challenge our perceptions of dying. Music, too, is a powerful conduit for our thoughts on death. From Mozart's haunting requiem to the somber melodies of Johnny Cash's final album, Musicians have long used their craft to grapple with mortality. Even cinema, our most modern art form, is not immune to this fascination. Films like The Seventh Seal and A Ghost Story present unique perspectives on death and the afterlife. Art, in its various forms, often serves as a mirror to our collective consciousness about death. What ethical dilemmas arise when we contemplate death? A complex query indeed. As we broach the finality of life, the ethical considerations become a labyrinth of questions that challenge our moral compass. Let's begin with the end-of-life decisions. These are choices concerning the care one wishes to receive when they're no longer able to express informed consent. They stir up ethical quandaries due to the balance that needs to be struck between respecting individual autonomy and preserving life. It's a delicate dance between the person's right to control their life and society's interest in preventing harm to its members. Then we have euthanasia, often referred to as assisted dying. This is where the waters become murkier. One side argues for the right to die with dignity, to avoid unnecessary suffering. The other side counters with the sanctity of life and the slippery slope argument that legalizing euthanasia could lead to non-voluntary or even involuntary euthanasia. And let's not forget the responsibilities of healthcare providers. They are often caught in the crossfire of these ethical dilemmas tasked with the heavy burden of respecting patient autonomy, 
acting in the best interest of the patient and doing no harm. But what happens when these principles clash? It's a moral tug of war that healthcare professionals grapple with daily. In summary, death is a complex, multifaceted topic that stirs up a plethora of emotions and questions. We've explored cultural perspectives, scientific viewpoints, philosophical reflections, historical views and personal stories, all of which offer unique insights into this universal certainty. We've delved into the psychological impact of death, its portrayal in art and culture, and the practical aspects that accompany it. And finally, we've navigated the murky waters of ethical considerations surrounding death. So as we've journeyed through these varying perspectives and considerations on death, it becomes clear that it's not just about the end, but also about the journey. It's about the decisions we make, the values we uphold, and the legacy we leave behind. In the face of death, perhaps the most profound question remains. How should we live?